Hi, Taiwo Man. I'm at WakasakaCon 2015, and I'm with Jose Pablo Cantillo. How you doing, sir? I I'm good. I'm good. You stole my mask. Well, yeah. What could I say? Do it was good. Do you always wear the mask? I do. You've never been. I look better with the mask. I look so much better with the mask. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like no arguments. I'd here. be better with a paper bag. I'm teasing. <laughs> paper. Oh, for you. Yeah. Um, you've modernized it. Yeah. You yeah. should just do a paper bag. Yeah, it would be cheaper and easier. Man, that's awful. No, you should let it fly. Let it fly. So what are we what are we doing today? What are we talking about? Well, how's the convention going for you so far? It's been really good. This is some really good uh, old fashioned root beer they gave me over here. Oh, nice. Wild Bills, tasty. Cool. No, it's been. A, I, I love coming here. This is my second time at Walker Soccer Boston. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I love the Bostonians. Yeah, I saw you last year here. Yes, I. I you're hard to forget. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, Tell us a little about the character you played in Walker Stalker. What, what season was your character? Oh, on Walking Dead? Yeah, uh, I played uh, Martinez. I was in Woodbury. I was part of the Woodbury crew under the governor. I was one of his soldiers. And uh, I was there on three, and then Woodbury burned. Uh, and um, I, I came back for a little bit in season four. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I was, uh, I was a good soldier. So far this morning, you did the dictionary, they called it? Yep. Stictionary. Okay. Stictionary was fun. Um, I've never played before. Have uh, you played this? I played fiction. I mean, not it's the same, the same thing. Idea. Yeah, they just, uh, it's all trivia related to um, Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, one, one, lost one. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, one and one. one. Not one. bad. Yeah. 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 How's the how's the, uh, the convention been for you? Uh, so far, I mean, it's just beginning, so we've just been getting our bearings, seeing who's around, what's around, that kind of thing. Cool. we got two days, so hopefully people people can make it down. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, Taiwo TV has been about a year now. About a year? A year and a half, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it started because of? Well, originally we had a magazine back in college, and then we took the magazine idea and made it a television station. Oh, that's cool. Well, congratulations on yeah. it. I can't wait to check it out. Yeah, yeah, I hope you do. Tell all your cool. friends. We need lots more likes. Oh, there you go. I'll do that. Well, thank you for stopping by. Hey, right, thank you. Thanks, man. So what else are you working oh. on? Um, I no. did, uh, well, right now, you just came out. Chappie just came out on DVD. Okay. You should check that one out. And uh, I have a couple of films that are coming out in the fall. In the fall. Uh, man Down is a picture that I did. And you know how it is this, these days where you can spoil anything other than just say the name of the, the title. Right. and the, Sometimes you're not even allowed to say you're in a project. But uh, that I can, I can say I did uh, Man Down, and, um, and I hooked up with... Uh, someone from The Walking Dead uh, with Glenn Mazzara. We did a show. Uh, he invited me on a show recently called Damien that'll come out next year. Oh, great, great. Yeah. Now, do you have a website if fans want to check? Go to uh, twi to Twitter. Uh, Twitter, yeah. The, I answer questions from fans all the time. Oh, okay. So just yeah. check out on Twitter. J yeah, you put in Jose Cantillo, it's verified. All right, awesome. Right great. On. Thanks for, well, thanks thanks for doing that. Time with us. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks Take care. Thanks. Thanks, man. Hi, Taiwan Man at Waka Soccer Con, and I'm talking with Vincent Wood. How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. How how's, are you? Good. Right. So, how's the convention going for you so far? I mean, it just started, so. It's good, man. I mean, for it to still be early, it's been a lot of people here, you yeah, know, that's great. having a good time. People are very, you know, kind and respectful. So, have a good time. Yeah. Was this your first Waka Soccer Con, or have you been to the other ones? Uh, uh, like, which ones have you gone I've to? Been, I've been to mostly all of them. Oh, only, I think the only ones I haven't been to is um, New Jersey. I think that's it. But I usually go to all of them, man. You know, very supportive of them. They all they always treat you right. Always be very professional. So, you know, I enjoy Walker Stalker. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favorite city like of the ones you've gone to? Um. Well, the biggest one is Atlanta. Atlanta's the biggest one. Yeah, the biggest one is Atlanta, and plus I got family there, so that's probably oh, the only reason nice. to be able yeah. to see family yeah, as well. Cool. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your character that you played on The Walking Dead? I played a character, Oscar. He's one of the inmates in season three. Um, to me, he was a really good guy. I actually thought he was going to be around a little longer. Oh. Seven episodes. But, um, you know, I got to tell people all the time, just because a person is in prison, you know, doesn't make them a bad person. Right. It just made a bad choice in life. Right. And I think that's how Oscar was. But he was loyal. He was committed. You know, wasn't a troublemaker, and I thought he proved himself to the group. Yeah. So what are the projects you've been working on since The Walking Dead? Man, I've been doing a lot, man. So I, I do a lot of theater as well. Oh, I'm cool. up I'm up for uh, a few major parts, you know, oh, working nice. with John Singleton. 
Um, possible being playing Suge Knight in the new Tupac movie. Um, I've done a lot, man. You know, it's, it's not even, honestly, it's not even about The Walking Dead. It's about your season, your time in life. You know, so, you know, uh, people be like, oh, I know that opened up a lot of doors. If it opened up doors, then I wouldn't have to audition. <laughs> but one door did get opened up that I didn't have to audition. It's for this show called Psych. And they, they really made me feel, you know, a part of their family, you know, for somebody to be like, I want you on, your, on, their, on their show without even having an audition. I was like, well, man, I was very, very grateful for that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. What is Psych? Is that a, is that a Yeah, it was, it was uh, about the two, like, detectives. Like, real, it was comedy. It was funny. It was funny. Sounds kind of fun. Yeah, they have been on, like, eight seasons. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, it, if it's not AMC, huh? <laughs> nah. It's, it's, you got so much time, right? I mean, right, right. I'm, I'm busy producing TV, not watching TV. Hey, man, yeah. you got to make a way. Or you, plus, yeah. you can see what's going on and what everybody else is doing. So you won't end up doing the same thing right. somebody else is doing. Right. What's, so you still with psych people? You still no, they, they, it's over with. Did. I only did one episode. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was a guest star on that. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So what's coming up next? What are you working on now? Um, like I said, I got a lot of theater coming up. I got, you know, some stuff that's playing on TV right now and trying to create my own stuff, like a traveling show. Oh, cool. Yeah, so a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Pretty busy, pretty busy. Gotta be. So do you like the theater stuff more than television? I actually or? do. Yeah. I love theater. Yeah. You know, that's to me, that's where the real and the true actors acting comes from when you uh, can do theater. Because there's no action and cut. Well, it's action, and it's action all the way out, but there's no cut. Right, right. So you got to know how to keep it going, even if you mess up. Yeah, cool. right. So if people, fans want to follow you, they have a website. Or it's Vincent M. Ward everything. Vincent M. Ward Instagram, Vincent M. Ward Facebook, Vincent M. Ward dot com, Vincent M. Ward Twitter. So. Be checking out, I appreciate out. it, man. Thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks for talking to us. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, Taiwan Man. I'm at Waka StockerCon 2015. I'm talking with Daniel Bonjour. How are you doing, Daniel? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Good, good. So how's the convention been so far for you? It's been great. They're always fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw you doing the dictionary like yeah. panel earlier. Yeah. The, that must have been a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm not. I wasn't very good. I got I got Fear the Walking Dead, which I could not figure out how to how to draw. So, <laughs> are you a big gamer in general at all? Like, do you like games? Or? Yeah, I like games. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't call myself a gamer because I think I'm, I'm probably a noob, is what they'd call me. But um, no, I love games. They're fun. They're always fun. I just I can't sit for like eight hours and do them. Right, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite game? Um, let me think. I. I was, you know, like I like the Hitman, like I work on Hitman, and then so they sent me a copy of the game, and okay. I like the idea of it because it's there's a realism to like if you die, it's like one shot and you're kind of done. It's not like you can, <laughs> you yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, design. exactly, yeah, yeah. So that was fun, yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you tell us a little about your character on Walking Dead? Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was season five. Um, played Aiden, which was the son of Deanna, who's the uh, I guess mayor of Alexandria in her own way and um, you know story-wise I was I was the one that kind of instigated the beef between Glenn and everybody um, and it was just I was I was Glenn's role in Alexandria like the the runs and all that stuff I was the head of kind of security stuff but uh, just had never really had the experience to the outside world and that's where Rick's group and our group kind of bumped heads because they're more savage and we're more civilized in our minds you know so what are you working on now? Uh, right now, so I just finished filming Satisfaction, which is a show on USA. And then uh, I directed a movie a couple years back that should be coming out uh, hopefully next year called After the Rain. And, um, and then just auditioning right now, trying to find that next job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you go to a lot of the conventions? This is my third. This is my third. I did Motor City Comic Con, and I did a... Orlando Walker Stalker and then this Walker Stalker. I think I've got I'm doing Philadelphia and then Atlanta. But so 
You like going to the conventions? Yeah, they're fun. It's great meeting all the people and and uh, yeah, getting to interact with some of the some of the fans and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So if fans want to follow you, do you have like a web page? Like Twitter? yeah, um, yeah, DanielBonjour.com, and then an Instagram. It's all my name. So Instagram's Daniel Bonjour, Twitter's Daniel Bonjour, all that stuff. Facebook. So yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for taking time to talk with us. I do appreciate it. Absolutely. Enjoy the rest of the con. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of the convention. You too. Thanks <laughs> a lot. <laughs>
there's a lot of major horror authors that feel insulted when they're called horror authors. King doesn't like to be called a horror author. Kuntz, they write thrillers. I have no problem being called a horror author. I do some thrillers, but horror is where it's at. Um, when I finally run out of horror stories, I'd like to dabble a little bit in fantasy or science fiction. But uh, I'm going to write zombie stories as long as people want to read zombie stories. So since you're an author and you write about all the zombie stuff, do you think you can actually survive a zombie apocalypse? Absolutely not. I'm a, I'm a 90 minute survivor. I'm a middle aged fat guy, which means that I'm just a meals on wheels. It's the other guy to like knock it down to stall them. So they can yeah, get away. talk to the, the 25 year old Marine who's got the weapons <laughs> and the, you know, I'm going to sit in my house and complain that I can't go to Starbucks until something comes and eats me. <laughs> So do you have a website if you want to go check out the book? I do. We're at uh, johnlcampbell.com. It's right down there on the bottom. You can also uh, connect with me through Facebook, Twitter. Um, check out our reviews on Amazon, on Goodreads, and uh, you can go into most major retailers and uh, pick up the book, order them online through Walmart, Target. We're all over the place. Yeah, cool. Sounds great. Thanks for taking time to talk to us. I do I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. Thanks. Hi, Tower Man. We're, I'm at Walker Stalker Con. I'm talking with Tova Felshu. How are you doing, Tova? I'm doing very well, thank you. So how's the convention been going so far? It's going wonderfully because I love the Boston area and my family was educated in the Boston area. For the last 99 years, we have been educated up in this, this area of the world. So I love Boston very much and know it pretty well. So can you tell us a little about your character from the Walker Stalker? My character is Deanna Monroe, and she's the head of the community of Alexandria. And Alexandria has been spared the roamers, the walkers, for two years. As a result, she has order, peace. She has order, peace, um, culture, the beginning of culture. She has an herb garden where she grows food. They have food sources from a nearby mall, which is abandoned. And they barely, they don't carry weapons, nor do they feel they need a guard and a watchtower. That's how unscathed this community is. So when Rick arrives with his band of outlanders who've been outside the walls for so long and have suffered so much, he offers me brawn, muscle, military strength and savvy, and I offer him peace and culture, and a nap that's safe, and babysitters for his children, and education, and order, and the potential of actually restarting society. And that's where there's a symbiosis and where the two forces meet. So the question is, how much does Rick need his paranoia about the outside world, or is his paranoia not paranoia at all, but the truth of the situation? And how will Deanna's incredible intelligence um, be betrayed by her incredible innocence that she has escaped this scathing situation outside the walls of Alexandria. Now if there was an actual zombie apocalypse, do you think the show has maybe helped you prepare for something like that? I think the show taps into the greatest fear we have that in this little marble that's blue and green that we call the planet Earth. We have not yet proved that there's life anywhere else in this vast universe. There probably is life. That's mathematically probable. But we have not evolved to the point that we can access it. So at the moment, we're alone in this vast place of many uh, solar systems. And the only thing that threatens this Earth is man himself, man against man. So the walkers aren't the walkers. The walkers are ISIS, Ebola, AIDS, um, felonies, uh, crimes. They're the underbelly of the planet, the part of the planet that prefers an AK-47 to building a postal department or a health department, the grown-up non-romantic things that make a society possible. So that's why I think the show is so popular, because it goes beneath society to the very, very fundamental fears we have of disappearing from this earth, 
uh, from the brutality of homo sapien to homo sapien. Now, do you do a lot of the conventions around here? I've this not this done one? any conventions. This is my first Boston Walker Stalker, and I was, um, I was at the Orlando Walker Stalker, and that's it so far. I've only done two in my whole life. Uh, do you like them, or do you think you'll do more? Or? I will... I will do more. I do enjoy them. I enjoy people, and I enjoy being asked to do them, and I enjoy seeing my colleagues. I love seeing people from the series when we're together for lunch and group photos. It's lovely. Yeah, I imagine you build a lot of friendship on sets with like the fellow actors and actresses, right? What? You build a lot of friendships with your couple of workers. You do. We build a lot of friendships because we're on location. We're all away from our home. And uh, we form other social bonds, you know? Who wants to eat dinner alone? Not many of us. But the schedule is long, and the commitment is 150%, and the temperature is about 101 degrees. So it is a place where you will lose weight. Come be on The Walking Dead, and you get paid not only to act, but you get it's like a spa. It's like li living in a steam bath. <laughs> Any practical jokes happen on the sets? Well, really well, it was somebody's birthday, and we were trying to get a very serious take. And instead of a serious take, I went, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I sang happy birthday to that person as Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> so. Now, what else are you working on? Other projects? Are you working on other things? Well, I've been asked by another uh, network to do three guest starring shots as the the mother of a lead in a new series coming up and we're just waiting for AMC to give permission or not. We're hoping they will. And I'm opening a new act at 54 Below, which is right below Studio 54 in New York City at 54th Street between eight, uh, 7th Broadway and 8th, between Broadway and 8th, October 13th, 15th, 16th, and 17th called Aging is Optional and you're all invited. Aging is Optional because God, I hope it is. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thank you. Well, if people want to follow you, is do you have a website people can go? I do, www.tovafelchu.com, and I'm on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. I've posted a few already from today. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for talking to me. I do appreciate it. Thanks. Hi, I'm Tywo Man. I'm at Walker Soccer 2015. I'm talking to Militia Hutchinson. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's so great to yeah, meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you as well. Yeah, we got to see you last year, but we didn't get to meet, didn't get to talk. To, so it's good this year we get to talk. It's finally happening. Yes. Finally. Yes. Second Walker Stalker yes. here in Boston. It's awesome. I'm so happy to be here. So for the Walker Stalker people, the big thing you do is the, the voice of character on that I Walker do the, game. Yes, I do the voice of Clementine in Telltale Games, The Walking Dead. And... Um, She's only, um, well now she's 11 years old, so she sounds like this. She's a little girl, so I'm just a few years older. <laughs> just, five. just a few. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> yeah. So, and I heard the, the game does also series, plus seasons, I should say. Yeah, it's, it's a... So it's an ongoing game all the time. It is an episodic game. There's season one, there's five episodes, season two, five episodes, DLC in between. Uh, they're working on a Michonne miniseries at the moment. That'll be three episodes, and then eventually, hopefully sooner than later, season three of The Walking Dead. Hopefully with yours truly yes. as Clementine. So yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's cool because we get to spend so much time with the characters, and that's, you know, in the voiceover world, that's the dream gig, is to get to play a character for a length of time. And, and this has just been, I'm a huge fan of the franchise as is, so this has just been really awesome for me in general. Now, since don't, the game is storyline driven, yeah. can somebody go down the wrong path and actually get your character killed in the game? No. I mean, when you're playing as Clementine in season two as the playable character, you do, you do die. But you come, you come back. You come back. You come back. <laughs> no, 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 no. You just you come back, and then you have to do the scene until you actually succeed. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. You want to have it? Want to have a death time? No, that's no, bad. never. Yeah. yeah. So you've done other games and other things as well. Can you tell us about? Yeah, I've I've done a lot of work with Telltale Games. Uh, I mean, I've done 
Uh, started with them with Sam and Max many, many moons ago. The Back to the Future game, The Wolf Among Us, which is another amazing game. Uh, I'm currently doing voices for an animated series called Yokai Watch, which will be coming out relatively soon. I don't know the date. I should. Um, and yeah, I'm just keeping busy doing voices and stuff. I heard that you sang in one of those games. Yeah, in the Back to the Future game, I played a nightclub singer named Trixie Trotter, and she 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 sang because she's a nightclub singer, and it was awesome. It so was you very sing cool. Too. I do, I do. Can you give us a sample? Uh, let's see. Well, as Trixie Trotter, she's whisper in my ear so no one can hear. That's Trixie. She's a blonde, and you know she's not the sharpest tool in the shed. But she's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what else is coming up? Um. Well, season three, <laughs> eventually. Uh, I hope. I don't. You know, I shouldn't even announce that because I don't know what their plans are. I'm pretty sure, sure Clementine's story will continue. I just don't know when and to what capacity. Right. And then the Yokai Watch coming out and. Um, yeah, just uh, having a good time, enjoying coming to the Walker Stalker cons and meeting people and speaking with the fans. I'm just grateful to be here. Yeah. So you do a lot of the conventions? I know you were here last year. Do you do other I, conventions as well? Or? Thus, uh, yeah, I've been to New York Comic Con. I was just at San Diego Comic Con. We did a live performance of scenes from season one. Um, I went to Dragon Con once. Uh, yeah, I do, but primarily... Uh, the Walker Stalker cons keep me pretty busy. Yeah. So there's only so many cons a person can do because, you know, after, I don't know, I can't even imagine doing more than one a month because, you know, after three days of convention, your brain is kind of like, <laughs> in a really, really good way, but yeah. it's, it's fried. It's zombie brain. It's zombie brain. It's zombified. Definitely. Yeah. 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 It's a lot, exactly. Getting into character. Yes. Yeah. So if people want to follow you, you have a website? I do. Um, I have a website. It's melissahutchison.com. I'm on the Twitters, which is the one I'm best at as far as social networks, because I'm a woman of few words. Uh, it's Melly Hutch, M-E-L-Y-H-U-T-C-H. And um, I'm on Facebook, Melissa Hutchison V-O. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, Instagram. I have an Instagram account, and I think it's, I think it's Melly Hutchison as well. I can't remember. I don't know. They'll find it. They'll find it. Just Google it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Anything else you want to share with your viewers? Well, I just thanks for anybody out there who is familiar with my work. I just I appreciate you thoroughly, and uh, again, I'm just so grateful to be here and 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 meet people. So. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for talking to of us. Of course, yeah. We You're appreciate welcome. It. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs>、um, Tyro Man at Walker Stalker Con, and I'm talking to Joel Prescott. How are you doing, Joel? Hello. I'm well, Tyro Man. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. 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 Fun to be here. It is so much fun to be here. I always love coming to get some of the zombie love from our fans of Walking Dead, and it's always wonderful as Jackie to be missed.、Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all、yeah. good in Boston. Yeah, I see all the, you know, everybody misses that character. Yes. Oh, oh, that's so sweet. You know, I think it was Frank Darabont's way of helping to introduce everyone to the theme of loss. Uh, which has become so significant throughout all of the seasons of the show.、Uh, that the, the group first, you know, of course they lose this sense of safety and then they lose all the things that they think they need to survive and then they start to lose each other.、Right. And so,、uh, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's、uh, quite a journey. Quite a journey. What did you like the best about your character? Ah, Jackie.、Ah, you know, I love that Jackie is human. Um, and、uh, when she feels that she's losing her humanity,、uh, that's when she decides that she can't continue on this journey anymore.、Uh, and she needs that、uh, sense of humanity, that sense of human bonding and connecting and、uh, a, a continued belief in the optimism of humanity. And I think that that's what the, the, the group is、uh, beginning to lose now. You know,、uh, there's no longer、uh, so much.、Um, 
sense of responsibility for each other. Uh, and, and that alone uh, is, is really worth mourning, you know. Yeah. So uh, I think it's, it's wonderful. And, and I can't wait to see what the next thing is, you know, they're going to have to endure uh, on this journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still, I still check it out. I don't watch every single episode, but I definitely make sure I catch the season finales. And when I hear that something awesome has happened on a Monday morning, I go back and, and catch, it. catch it on my DVR because I always DVR it. And uh, yeah, it's and it, it continues to surprise me in in various ways. So do you think the writers are doing a great job? With yeah, I think you know AMC is quite fortunate to have uh, a consistent. Um, a uh, group of writers. I think having Greg Nicotero still be a part of the show is a lot of the consistent excellence of it because uh, he's grown so much from just the person helping to create the special um, zombie look and all that good stuff <laughs> to the directing and everything and, and I think that uh, uh, that speaks well to uh, his, his uh, contribution you know, to AMC, the way he's grown. Do you think the uh, cult following does that surprise you, or do you think it was going to be this huge? That no, I'm total, totally this? surprised by it, totally surprised by it. I know when I first got the job, my agent told me, um, they want you for this zombie thing, it'll never see the light of day. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, well, you're probably right. Okay, let's go. Let's go do it. Right. And uh, even after we shot it, uh, I don't think I was aware personally of uh, the, the history of zombies and how it already had, you know, some uh, audience yes. that already is sort of invested in that Day of the Dead and all that stuff. I, I was never that kind of person. Uh, and then uh, when it all began to really mushroom, uh, it was a wonderful surprise. And it continues to be a surprise. Here we are years later. And uh, I'm still very touched and very surprised and very grateful to have people uh, come up and talk about the show and, and my part in it and, and etc. So it's, it's, it's still a wonderful surprise. Right. Yeah. How do you think you would fare in an actual zombie apocalypse? Oh, like, well, oh I'm, well I, I personally am quite kick-ass <laughs> and I think I'd be fine in a zombie apocalypse. I would uh, uh, probably carve out a special place for myself and my family and camouflage it well in the woods and you know exactly and, and build, we'll build something around it to keep the riffraff out you know <laughs> um, but you know I, I'm, I'm a survivor for sure I think you have to be to be in entertainment yeah. uh, I'm a hustler you know <laughs> so I, I totally believe that I would do well yeah. I would fare well in, yes. a, in an apocalypse absolutely <laughs> absolutely no doubt no so doubt. What have you been working on since the show? Oh, well, I have a few things coming up soon. I have a couple of feature films that I'm very excited about. Oh. Uh, one is called The Birth of a Nation, uh, based on the history of Nat Turner and uh, the bloodiest slave insurrection in the history of America. Oh, wow. uh, and that one uh, is produced by uh, Nate Parker, and it also stars Army Hammer from Long Ranger and Gabrielle Union. Uh, Jackie Earl Haley, who you might remember, Oscar nominated, uh, and a few other people. Uh, and that should be out in 2016, near the top of the year. And I have another film with Tony Todd uh, from Candyman, seven foot uh, oh Tony Todd. <laughs> He's seven feet of fun, uh, and he is quite great. It's called The Cold Descent, and uh, it, it has to do with a very unexpected train ride. That's all I can tell you about that one. Uh, okay. It's full of surprises. Uh, and I'm also a part of a new show on NBC called Game of Silence. Oh. Uh, and that will be on in the fall as well. Yeah. What is that one going to be about? Uh, well, it's about a group of boys who uh, have spent uh, some horrible, horrible years in juvenile detention. Oh. And we get to see them as adults and how that experience affected their lives. Oh, wow. oh interesting. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, you got a lot going on. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. So if fans want to follow you, do you have like a web page? Yes. Uh, well, I'm at the real, girl, the real Gerald, uh, J E R Y L, the real Gerald on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, and of course, you can always IMDb me and find out, you know, what's coming up on my little slate. Uh, and that's about it. Because even though I'm kick-ass, I'm not web savvy, <laughs> and I don't have a web page. I haven't done all that yet. But I really think that there's already enough out there, you know, yeah. with the Twitter and the IMDb yeah. and yeah. everything that, yeah, yeah they can, they they can, can find you. if they really love yeah. me, they, they will find me. Yeah. <laughs>
I'm sure so, they will. Thank you. They'll look you up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you for taking time to talk to us. We okay. do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Tyro you. Man. You. Okay. <laughs>
That's, uh, that's it for now. Mina, I'm kind of waiting for that. That's in production, post-production, and so we're, we're waiting to see when that's going to come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thanks for checking up with us. Sure, absolutely. It. It's good to see you again. As well. right, thanks. Okay. Hi, I'm Tyro Min. I'm at Marcus Soccer Con 2015, and I'm talking with Zach Galligan. How you doing, Zach? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Good, good. So how's the convention been so far? Uh, so far, I've been pretty good. Uh, I've had a very busy morning, and now you have a little bit of a lull at lunchtime, yeah. and then it picks up again in the evening, so it's been good. Yeah. A lot of people out eating brains, I guess, and stuff. Eat, yeah, pretty much. Brains seems to be the, uh, the delicacy here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so how, what have you been up to since the um, Gremlin movie? Uh, yeah, all sorts of stuff. A lot of television, Law and Order, S Star Trek, Voyager, um, Hatchet 3 came out a few years ago. I got a movie called The Chair coming out later this year. Also just did another Bigfoot movie called Camp Out. Probably would appeal, might, might appeal to your viewership. I'm just, I'm just guessing. Um, so yeah, so just staying, staying busy. Well, Gremlins was a big movie fan favorite for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Do you think they'll ever do like another like follow up to that? I mean, they have Well, they're list. they're talking about doing a sequel right now. Oh, so, okay. uh, Chris Columbus has gone on record saying that he will never allow the first movie to be remade. So, they're not going to do a remake. They'll do some kind of a, a reboot, but it won't be um, it won't be a straight up remake. It'll be sort of like what they did with Jurassic World where they've kind of updated the universe. Right. But they haven't remade the first movie in any way. Will you be on board for that project? Do you anticipate uh, that? I don't know yet. I would guess it's probably 50-50. Um, but everything changes so rapidly. It's, it's really hard to tell. Until you get that call and you're on the set, I don't, I don't trust anything. Yeah. Uh, what advice do you give to like a young actor, actress trying to start out today? Don't even think about becoming an actor. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Do something else. Do something else, don't act, the odds are against you. Unless you can't imagine yourself doing anything else other than being an actor for your entire life, you shouldn't even begin to attempt this profession. It's only for people who can't imagine, you know, not life without it. Yeah. What was the most difficult role you had to choose today, would you say? Most difficult role? Um... I guess I would have to say, I did a film uh, about 30 years ago about teenage suicide called uh, Surviving. And the subject matter obviously was just very, very painful and difficult. And so that emotionally was a very, very draining experience to, to have to kind of go through that every day for, you know, five weeks. After a while, it really wears on you and you just want to, you know, do something happy. So. But you have to, you know, you have to, you have to buckle down and, and do your job. So, so it, it was what it was. But the serious dramas are, are, are hard. What up? What projects do you have coming up right now? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I'm, I'm, at, I, I don't really like to talk about upcoming projects be, that much because they haven't really been finalized. But I'm, um, I'm having a meeting next week for one that I'm. I'm signed to do, and ho hopefully uh, we can work out all the dates. It's really a question of whether we can work out um, the shooting schedule because it's a four-week commitment, and I, I have a bunch of stuff already scheduled in uh, November, December, January, and it's now it's whether we can kind of squeeze it in there. So I got stuff, I got stuff still going on. I ironically, I get most of my work now through Facebook and Twitter. I swear to God, I get most of my jobs from social media, oh, wow. um, and that's just the way the the world is, has changed. And it's great because people are like, "Can I just send you a script?" I'm like, "Yeah, you can. Just send me a script." <laughs> and I'll, you know, some of them I say no to because they're not good, but some of them are quite good. So, yeah, kind of interesting. So, people, so fans can find you on Facebook. Too. Well, I wouldn't say f yes. Fans can find me on Facebook. They can find me on Twitter at ZWG Man. Those are my initials. ZWG and the word man, because I'm a man, ZWG man. I'm on Instagram as ZWG man, I'm on Twitter as ZWG man, and I'm on Facebook just as Zach Allegan, and there's also a Zach Allegan fan page. 
Um, and I'm on a four square too, although I'm still figuring out what that even is. And I think I'm, I think I'll, I'll, use, you, I'll use your platform as a major announcement, breaking news. Um, probably going to start in the next couple of months, start my own YouTube channel too. And just post um, some, you know, a YouTube video every other day. And it probably won't be that exciting. It'll probably just be like me and my cats and stuff like that. But it'll kind of be fun. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Will Mowgli, will Mowgli yep. be making them famous? What'd you say? Will Mowgli be making them famous? The Mogwai? Yeah, yeah. Mo Mowgli's from a Jungle Book. Mogwai. This is a Mogwai. Mowgli is from Jungle Book. Um, he, he, he's here. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello. I actually didn't do the voice. That was Howie Mandel. So I just have to do a Howie Mandel approximation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you do a lot of conventions? Um, that really depends on your definition of the word a lot. I do uh, probably five or six a year. Is that a lot? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. That keeps you busy. Yeah, it keeps me busy. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks a lot for taking time to talk to us. Do All right, appreciate dude. it. All right, it's thanks, man. Enjoy the rest of the con. Okay, dude. Thanks. Bye. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Tyo Man. Uh, Walk a Stock Con 2015, and I'm talking with Jason McLeod. How you doing, Jason? I'm great. How are you? Good, nice good. Nice to meet you, Tyro Man. Yes. How's the convention going for you so it's far? It's great. I love this convention. This is the second one I've done. I've done Dallas back in March, and it was just fantastic. And uh, the number of people is great, and the, the costumes and everything is just great. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, yeah. these conventions. Sure. Now, you're the author of Doc C. Correct. It's Dark Siege, A Connecticut Family's Nightmare, which is volume one, and Dark Siege, The Nightmare Returns, which is volume two. Um, combined, they're about 860 pages, but it's the absolute most terrifying case I've ever experienced in 28 years as a paranormal investigator, as, and I'm an empath, and I've worked with Ed and Lorraine Warren since I was 18 years old, and they're the pioneers of the entire ghost investigation movement, the craze that exists today. and. Uh, it's endorsed by Bishop James Long and required reading for his demonology course. Oh, wow. So is this a story about how normal? Uh, it's a case involving a 40-year-old uh, woman and her 6-year-old daughter who were passing by Union Cemetery in Easton, Connecticut, which is one of the most haunted in the country. And Kelly makes uh, contact with a earthbound negative spirit right in the cemetery that follows them home. And the mother, of course, um, doesn't believe a word of it until she herself experiences the ghost in the house the next day. And then when the teenage brother and his two best friends have the house for themselves, they went and bought a Ouija board because they were experiencing the same spirit and then all hell broke loose, literally. So my purpose in doing these conventions, my purpose in writing these books 20 years after the fact is to warn people about the negative occult, about Ouija boards and why they're so dangerous, and more importantly, how to protect yourself and how to pray properly, and how to identify these types of situations, and how to make sure they don't happen to you. Wow, so that's pretty interesting. Thank you. Um, so you're still an investigator on I do, yeah, I, I investigate. Um, I am involved in some current things. Um, honestly, most the most current thing I've done as an empath is I was at Connecticut Horror Fest uh, last month, and I was talking to two women and a man, and I kept zeroing in on the man's shirt even though I was trying to talk to the women. And I finally said, you have a really interesting shirt. And the man told me that was my sister's and she's passed. And I got the name Diana. And I asked Diana and he got welled up in his, you know, tears in his ears and he says, Dina. And then I'm empathic, so I pick up on his grief and then we both started to weep a little bit. And uh, I just knew that she was basically with him at, this, at the convention and basically loves him and, and protects him. So that's, my purpose is twofold, is to help families deal with these negative entities which can be absolutely devastating, mm -hmm. and to help families deal with lingering loved ones in a very compassionate way and help them cross, help bring resolution so everybody can be at peace. And that's the, actually the subject of my third book called Our Journey Home, Guiding Spirits into the Light, which is coming out, which is full of all the beautiful stories. But you can find all those books and all my related merchandise at darksiege.com, D-A-R-K-S-I-E-G-E.com. Uh, and I'm always interested in helping people and of course if I have the time to do it but um, I'm writing another book called Rage in Rathdrum which is a case I did in Idaho which is absolutely profound and um, a fifth uh, little booklet called Handbook for the Transition to help people understand that there's nothing to fear leaving the body 
and there's everything to gain by going into the light that opens up for us when we leave the body. Oh, wow. So when are these ones due to uh, come out? I hope to have Rage of Rathrum out by Christmas time, and uh, actually I might have both of the new ones out by Christmas time. Now, do you do a lot of the conventions in the area? Yeah, or? I do Scarefest in Lexington, Kentucky, a lot of the comic conventions, a lot of the large paranormal conventions. I used to do some of the smaller ones, but I'm really steering away, steering away from those. Um, but I plan to do more Walker Stalker cons. And, um, you know, I really start just focusing on the large, giant conventions because there's so many more people that I can reach out to and so yeah. forth. Cool. Very cool. Now, do you have another website? Or just the uh, it's darksiege.com, and then there's authorjasonmcleod.com, which is author, A-U-T-H-O-R, J-A-S-O-N-M-C-L-E-O-D.com. Okay, awesome. So people can find out the book schedule. And Correct. Like yeah, and I have upcoming schedules. events on the darksiege.com page, um, all the different shows that I'm going to be doing. I was on Coast to Coast AM, so you can find those interviews if you're Coast uh, subscribers. And I do a lot of radio shows and radio blog shows and things like that. And uh, a lot of, you know, event photos, which are fun. Cool. Very cool. Well, oh, thanks for taking time to talk to us. Enjoy the rest of the con. Thank you. Very good one. Thank you Thanks a lot. Nice to see you. Yep, thanks. Hi, Tyro Man. I'm at Walker Stalker Con 2015. And I'm talking with Sam Mizzanino. Mizzanino. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. How's the convention been going for you so far? It's been excellent. There's been a lot of interest in my book, so it's really been fantastic. Okay, now you came out with uh, this common graphic novel. Is that the book you came out with? Right, it's called Prince of Pieces. Okay, can you tell us a little about it? Yeah, it's about the return of Jesus, and uh, he comes back not quite as expected. Uh, the tagline is, for 2,000 years you've been eating his flesh and drinking his blood, now it's his turn. <laughs> so is it kind of a zombie? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So oh, that's funny. So, uh, yeah, so he uh, comes back and he's still got his biblical powers, so he takes people out by doing things like turning them into pillars of salt, giving them leprosy. So, wow. so, so he comes back as a badass. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> he's, it's basically the son of God is mad as hell. Yes. <laughs> so how long ago did the book come out? Like, it came out in October of 2014. Oh, okay. So it's been a yeah. Listen, yeah. Yep. Is there a sequel coming out? Is uh, it more planned? Or I, I'm considering doing a follow-up. I, I haven't started it yet, but it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. cool. So. Do you go to a lot of conventions in this area? And stuff? Not in this area, but I've been to um, Kamikaze in L.A., and I was at Emerald City in Seattle. Oh, okay, cool. How were those conventions? They were excellent. I had a really good, good experience there, so, especially Seattle. So what inspired you to write the book? Are you a big zombie fan or uh, um, religion? The, well, you know, the book was primarily inspired because I, I've, it angered me to see how televangelists exploit people and use religion to do that. Mm -hmm. So that was really the thing that really got the fire going. Oh, wow, cool. So, yeah. What would the sequels be about? Still be Jesus? Or yeah, if I... Well, I've I've just finished a second book oh, okay. that's um, yeah that that's not related to this, but it's a um, basically a parody of a children's book, and I'd probably characterize it as a uh, a children's book for parents who drink too much. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay, interesting. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so do you do you follow the show a lot? Uh, I do. do I do. Yeah. So who are here at the convention is sort of like, like you decided to see that after? Well, you know, it's funny. No, you know, it's funny because working the table, you don't see anybody. So, oh, okay. you know, so you yeah, have no opportunity to no do that. No. See no. no. Have you seen the guest list? Is there somebody that you were like, oh, I'd like to try to get away and try to meet them? No, no. no. You know, I love the show, but I'm not a big uh, fan guy. So, uh, okay. you know. But, but it's been great to be here. It's just a great environment and a great atmosphere. Any other conventions coming up? Are you going to go into? Uh, I'm doing Scaracon in Verona, oh, okay. New York, and then I'm going to do a Comic Con in Buffalo, New York. Oh, okay. Are you going so. to be the, at the big one, New York Comic Con? No, no, oh, not no, I'm not going to make that. Oh, so, nice exactly, yeah. So, but yeah, so it's been great to be here, and 
Now, do you have a website if people want to get information on the book? And I do. The, the website is uh, www.princeofpieces.com, and that's P-I-E-C-E-S. And I also have a Facebook page, oh, okay. uh, and the book's available from the publisher, which is Creator's Edge Press, okay. and it's also available on Amazon. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So people can check out the book. Yeah, I hope they do. Yeah, cool. Well, thank, thanks for taking time to talk with us, and great. hope the best of the convention it works out thank, great for you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Tyro Man, and I'm here with RJ Mitty at Walker Stalker Con. How you doing, RJ? Good, man, good. Definitely a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. So you were on the Breaking Bad. I was, for, for a hot second, right? right? How long were you on the series for? Uh, I was on Breaking Bad for almost seven years. Seven years. I that started, was uh, yeah, it was a good run. I started when I was 14, and I, uh, I finished when I was 20, turning 21. Awesome. And, uh, cool. Yeah. I had, had fun doing it. It was a big part of my life, and... Sad to see it was over, but you know, happy to have an ending. Yeah. yeah. So. so what projects are you working on now? Um, I'm in the middle of shooting a movie called Triumph. Um, it's about high school wrestling, and it's uh, it's it's good. It turned out nicely. It's uh, it's we're we're in the middle. We're on day ten out of twenty four, and just it's coming along and good people, and I'm 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 very happy about it. So. Was it challenging growing up as a child actor, like school and um, stuff? Or I, yes and no. Jealous? I mean, the, the thing, I was always, I was always homeschooled. So really, I, it was actually nice to be on the set. And the thing is, the perks of being on the set and schooling is you get a private teacher. I had a private teacher from 14 to 18. And I actually graduated high school earlier because I wasn't a big fan of school and I just wanted to get it, get get, done. Get it done. done. But but I didn't finish because I wanted to keep my teacher. And um, I, I kept her until I was 18 and then she became my little sister's teacher. And it was weird. I never really got the, the high school experience or any of that, but I did go to prom and homecoming and all that with friends. And I never missed out. So. Yeah. So you got it all. You got the I, I got the best of both worlds, and I, you know, I think the perk is is, is working. I I lo I'm a, I like to work. I don't I don't like to sit idle and, and not evolve. And the thing about um about being in this industry, if you like to work, you will work. Right. If you wanted people just to hand it to you, you you might get that for a little bit, but that's not gonna last forever. No, you gotta hustle out there. Right? Always. Definitely, man. So, I'm sorry. So, did you say you have some, you do have some projects I, going on right now? I do. I, uh, I'm shooting a movie right now called Triumph. I did another movie called Gods and, uh, not a movie, a series called Gods and Secrets. I will oh, be coming okay. out on Bootleg Universe on YouTube. Um, which, it's, um, it's a superhero short. It's, oh, uh, yeah. That works, right? I, uh, I, I play, uh, I play a villain oh, of a okay. sort. Oh, okay. So I, I, I do that, and it's, uh, I can't go into too much detail, but it'll be coming out soon. It's called Gods and Secrets. I'm shooting this movie right now called Triumph. I do a lot of um, nonprofit work, so I'm oh, traveling nice. around, working for a bunch of different companies and organizations. Just um, I, I will talk about diversity and disability and turning a disability into an ability and anti-bullying and... Um, is the importance of not letting your fear manipulate who you are and, and what you are capable of. Oh, so, great. yeah. I get around. Yeah, sounds like it, yeah. Always going. So, do you have like a, a couple of fan on the web? Do you have like some fan pages? Yeah, I um yeah, my Twitter uh, RJ Mitty, um just okay. my name and my my Instagram is the same and my Facebook's the same and it's all it's all me. Yeah. I um I mean I have people that my manager and my mom are on it too, right. but uh but it's it's me. I yeah, I'm not I'm not the biggest updater. I like I I try to keep my actual life and my social media like I try to keep my business and my actual life separate. It's, 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 it's dangerous when you start yeah. merging the two and, and people, you can't always differ, like, differenti <clears throat> differentiate how people look and see and perceive you, but, um, but I, I, I'm lucky in that sense that I'm able to. That's great. That's great. So, yeah. So do you, do you do a lot of the conventions? Or? I do. I've done quite a few Walker Stalkers. This is my first time doing one in Boston. I've done a few Comic Gons. Anytime I see Giancarlo at one, I always... <laughs> Check it out. Oh, you got to go. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
But yeah, man. A pleasure. Oh, thanks. Thanks, thanks for talking to us. No worries. We appreciate My it. pleasure. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy yeah. the uh, enjoy Walker Stalker, man. Yeah, you too. Yeah, man. See you all. Thanks. Hi, Taiwo Man. I'm at Waka Stalker with Brighton Shop. You know, is that correct? Got it right. All yeah. right, cool. So, how was it like being on the series? Did you uh, have fun? Yeah, it was lots of fun. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your character? That you, that you um, well, my character was on season four, and then she had, I had one uh, episode coming back on season five, and she was, uh, she thought the walkers were good, so that it led into some pretty interesting and um, kind of dark things. Okay. Yeah. But was your character, like, was she somebody's daughter? Or, like, uh, no. She she orphan, or and an orphan and big sister. Oh. Yeah. What do you like the best about acting? Um, I... Um, probably the thing that I like the best about acting is getting to you know, I like doing a lot of action and drama and getting to be a different person and act like something you haven't ever acted like before. I like really interesting characters yeah. and to play. Now, is it tough being an actress and doing your school at the same time? Uh, no, I I mean, I make fun. I make time for it. Um, okay. Even on set, you know, I'll be doing schoolwork, so, yeah. 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 Do you have a favorite subject? Um, just Recess, nice. lunch. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's always good. I like art. So, is this what you want to do when you grow up to be an actress? Is that what you're definitely, want to do? definitely. Yeah. yeah. Anything working on right now or coming? I up? actually flew out here from um, shooting a movie called uh, Miracles from Heaven. This is my weekend break. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Miracles wow. from Heaven, and I'm playing uh, Jennifer Gardner and Martin Henderson's daughter in it. Oh, okay. And um, I'm going back the day after. Uh, tomorrow to shoot some more. Yeah. What's the, what the movie's about? Uh, the movie's, it's um, a faith-based uh, hope movie, and it's about um, basically this little girl that gets sick, and um, and she falls down a tree, and then she gets healed. Oh. Yeah. Now, do you go to a lot of conventions? What? Do you go to a lot of conventions? Uh, yeah, I, I've done a few. I mean, I love them. I love getting to meet people. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Uh, I was just going to ask, how can people reach you? you on uh, yeah, Facebook? my um, Instagram is at Brighton Charbonneau, and my Twitter is Bryce Charbonneau. Okay, great. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Right, well, a song about never saying never and never being told what you can or cannot do. This is one of us. A one, two, three... Fighting got to me. I learned to find examples on the field of chivalry. And I saw mighty arms, much stronger than my arms could ever be. So I thought perhaps that field was not for me. But still I stayed and watched the fighting till one figure stood apart. In armor newly fashioned and a helm more pot than art. But each blow is thrown with honor and the lightness of the heart. So I took that step which soon became a start Cause she was not the biggest fighter Nor one to raise a fuss But I remember being proud that she was one of us And we might never stand together In the shield wall side by side Because of her I lift my sword with pride was ladylike and lively, not the type you would expect, with a braver heart than many and a slot shot to respect. And I guess she'd once decided this was where she'd like to be, and I thought if she could do it, why not me? Cause she was not the biggest fighter, nor one to raise a fight.